Okay, so first the exam is normal 28 questions, but whereas a lot of you said the exams are too long, and I, I understand, like the exams are a little long, and it's hard to get everything in fit in. Uh, so if you really know what you're doing, you can work through it in 30 minutes. Like if you know it cold, I can work through it in about 25 minutes. But you know, I wrote the darn thing, so I should be able to work through it. But um, this exam, I did make it a little bit shorter by just giving you two freebie questions instead of just one freebie question. So just be aware that it is a tiny bit shorter. The thing is, if I make it shorter, then the questions are worth more. And then so you, it begins to be a trade-off. So I've had students tell me that 25 questions is too few questions. So somewhere between 25 and 28 is the answer. And I think 26 might be about right, or 27. All right? Okay, all right. I just want to let you know to expect that. Uh, and it's spread between, sort of even on between chapters 5 and 6. Chapter 5 on energy and work. You'll see conservation of energy problems that will both be gravitational potential, kinetic, and elastic potential energy, those types of problems. Make sure you understand the relationships between them. Make sure that you can calculate the velocity, the compression of the spring, the height. We'll look at some problems like that today. Also, make sure that you know uh, how to calculate the work. First, just sort of basic. I apply a force over a certain distance at a certain angle. What is the work done? But then also, like the problem we're about to do, um, Ross, that when you have a force that's doing work, how that changes the energy, right? That's the work energy theorem bit. And then with the conservation of momentum, you'll see impulse problems. That's the F delta P over delta T, that when I apply a force, it changes the momentum in a certain way. It changes the velocity. When I have collisions, too, between an object and a stationary object, that that stationary object exerts a force. And we had several OpenStax questions on that. And then collisions, we have uh, collisions in um, one dimension. Even though you have a two-dimensional collision on the homework assignment, you won't see 2D collisions on this exam. All right, let's look at that problem. This is the one about the thing you were sliding. It looks like number six here. A cardboard box is sliding upon a horizontal surface. Uh, it has a velocity of 4.56 when it encounters friction, and then it has a velocity of 3 meters per second. Good question. And as I said, I think there are about eight questions that are straight from OpenStax verbatim, except I changed the numbers. So it does benefit you to go through and, and practice these. Uh, let me just show you how to set it up and how to work it. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so cardboard box. It travels along, it initially has a big speed, and then it has a little speed. So this thing has kinetic energy, right, when it starts. It has some amount of kinetic energy that's equal to one-half mv squared. And then it loses some energy due to the work. And so I'm going to write this just by saying that minus the frictional force times the displacement. That's the amount of energy that it's losing. Now, I'm sort of playing around with the negatives, and I think I worked through a similar problem like this in class last time, and somebody sort of called me out on it, that really what I should be doing is I should be saying plus F times D times cosine of theta, because the angle theta is 180, and that's where that negative comes from. Y'all follow what I'm saying there? I'm sort of skipping that step because I know that the frictional force is always going to do negative work. And so I'm just saying if I have my kinetic energy, I'm going to take away energy with the friction, and I know that that's going to be equal to my new kinetic energy. This is initial, that's minor, final. So minus F times D is equal to 1 half MV squared. Now we had to make a little thing here because my mass, I don't know my mass, and so I'm going to have mu times the normal force, which is m times g. That is my friction. That's my normal force. Excuse me. My normal force here is m times g, and times mu gives me my frictional force. Then I can go through and I can cancel out all the masses. Let me make this bigger so y'all can see. Can you turn out the lights here? Is that helpful? The front lights? Be better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I can cancel out the masses, and then I'm solving for, in this problem, I was looking for the coefficient. So I solve for the coefficient. So mu is going to equal to, this is f, 1 half vf squared minus 1 half vi squared divided by mu, divided by g times d. And then you can find mu. All those values are given, and so it was 0.71 is the value that you get for mu. Those types of problems, we had other types of problems. G, G versus gravity, right? Yeah, G is gravity. It's always equal to positive 10. B is the distance that it travels, and then VF and VI are the final and initial velocities. All right, that's a good question. You'll see, if not that question, you'll see similar questions. So you should know how to do this question in particular, but be able to apply it. You'll see it either like this or in a similar context. Yeah, there's another it's the bumper. It's the bumper car one. From okay. Yeah, that's a that's a different topic. Are there any other questions about this particular? We can come back to that. But uh, just are there any questions about this open stack assignment? Let me just sort of skim down through it. And if you see one, just sort of yell out or yelp. Yeah. For for that earlier problem, uh, where does it say about all about the mu and mass uh, times g? No, it doesn't say that. That's the thing. So on number six, um, it just says that it encounters friction. And so that's that's your key to say, oh, well, friction is my coefficient of friction times the normal force. And when I get that, that's how I know to put in this. That is my frictional force. And the work that's done by the frictional force is equal to this F times D. These are some of the more difficult problems that you'll encounter on the exam. These when we're looking at forces that are changing the energy, like here, the frictional force is decreasing the energy of the object and causing it to slow down. Uh, so given that I haven't uh, seen uh, any problems like, like this in previous uh, uh, tests I've uh, practiced on, uh, is there any probability that this is that question like this can be on the test? Absolutely, yes. And there are some on the old tests like this, too. Uh, uh, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they're super common, but they're fairly, they are on the old test. Uh, which one looks like worked on 2014 and 2015? Uh, I don't know. Look at 16 and 17. We can look at those. Courtney? Is there going to be a question like the one that you did yesterday in class with the bullets and you got to figure out? Yes. Recoil? Yeah. Something about the bullets. Uh, yeah. Blank uh, straight. Blankety straight, yes. You don't know what that means? Like I got just cursed. Blankety straight. You get it? No. No, I don't get it. Either. Okay. I, I, re I remember uh, uh, seeing a problem like, uh, uh, like similar to, uh, to bullets where, uh, where a machine gun was attached to a variable car. And, mm -hmm. and let's, let's get to those, okay? But let's stick to this right now, and then we'll go look at those momentum problems because that's, that's the next chapter. All right. Uh, anything on this one, though, that y'all want to look at? Look, here's another one. You're losing energy. To, oh, no. No energy is lost to friction. Y'all feel okay about these? I understand that, that you can find some of these answers online, but be careful because if you're just getting the answers online, then you're not, not really preparing for the test. John? Um, what wording would you use for the old uh, or like on the uh, Listen. poster? Would you know that it's either starting off just potential or potential? Okay. Well, you want to look. Yeah, so what kind of wording would I use that if it's starting off, does it just have potential or does it just have kinetic? Look, this is a, a lot like the roller coaster problem, right, that we did in class. And initially, you're right. You're always, at least if it has a height, then that tells you that potential energy, it has potential energy. And what's going to key you in on the kinetic energy is if I say it has an initial velocity and I want to know what it is, or I tell you, you know, it's 10 meters per second or whatever, or if I tell you that it's at rest initially, if it's at rest, then that means the kinetic energy is equal to zero. So that's what you're going to look for is, does I give, do I give you a velocity or do I ask you for a velocity at the beginning? And that was like the bowl. We were asking for the velocity at the beginning. Right? Uh, 
it says at the top the block has a downward velocity, so that means it does have kinetic energy here. It also has a certain height from the ground, so it also has potential. But down here, it only has potential. Okay. By the way, uh, you know, we can get rid of, on this question, we can get rid of a number of answers, right? I know that up here, or down here at 6 meters per second, so up here it's going to be more or less or less equal to 6. Yeah. It has to be less than, so you can get rid of 12, you can get rid of 10, you can get rid of 8, and then, you know, flip a coin. You almost got it. You don't want to flip a coin. Like, you want to work it out and get it exactly right. But looking for those wrong answers will help you on the test. All right? Yeah. Why would it only be potential energy as possible? Why would it what? Why would it only be potential energy as possible? Is that what I said? Yes, yeah. potential energy. Okay, I'm sorry, that was wrong. Yeah, so at the bottom you would only have kinetic energy. Uh, you have no potential energy. Okay? Does that answer your question, John? Any of these others you want to look at? Or any other the car, car engine? The car engine? The car engine? Okay, so in the car engine, this goes back to our definition of power. You have one or two questions about power, it's not going to be a huge part of the test. But I, I'm told that the power is equal to a hundred thousand watts for this car engine, and it tells me the force is ten thousand newtons, and I want to know the time to travel 100 meters. So power is equal to work over time. Power is equal to force times distance over time. And I'm looking for this quantity. So I say T is equal to F D over P. And I have all those values. The step here is realizing that work is F over D. Sometimes we also write power not as work, but as energy over time. But as far as we're concerned, those are identical statements. That energy is work, and work is energy. Just a couple questions on power. One or two. All right. This one? Maybe that, but on your old test, you have, yeah. yeah, yeah. One, for, there was one similar to this, right? When you do friction, would you do friction minus friction times the length or the height? Oh, the length, right? good question, right. So, yeah, this was from last year's final, actually. Um, so you have, these are trickier than the cardboard box because, you know, you got two distances. And you're right, Courtney, that, that's sort of, are you going to use... The height, or are you going to use the distance, right? You use the distance, right, because the frictional force, the amount of energy that the frictional force consumes or takes away is proportional to the distance. So here I would say, uh, what was the situation? Yeah, so it would be potential energy minus the work done by friction, which is F times D, will equal to the kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, and that potential energy, you're right in what you just said, it would be mgh. And again, just like we did before, what I'm saying here is I start with this amount of potential energy, and then the frictional force takes away some of that energy, and what I have left is the kinetic energy of the object. But notice I have two different distances, and i got to make sure I get them right, that this is the height which is this distance. That tells me how much potential energy I have. And this is the distance of the incline because it matters. It's not a conservative force. It's a non-conservative force. It matters the path that I take. Remember, conservative forces are path independent. Non-conservative forces are path dependent. And friction is a what? Conservative or non-conservative? It's non-conservative. It doesn't conserve energy. Right. It loses energy. Okay? Is that clear? These are all good questions. You're going to see... Do you have, another, sorry, do you have no? one more question that was like, if you throw, if you throw the ball up or something and it's 
max height was five, what would it be when it came down at two? Uh, because it's oh, grabbing, yeah. is it the same as it is at five? Do you mean this question right here? Mm -hmm. Or? It was like that. It was on an old test. It would be the same because it's not losing any energy. No. So I think what you're saying is I take a ball and I throw it up and it comes back down and I know that it reaches a height of five meters right here but I want to know what is its velocity here when h is equal to two meters right yeah so uh, this is a different problem let's work this this is not a bad problem let's take a look so up here I have energy that's just potential energy. But here, I have energy that's potential energy plus kinetic energy. The reason is I know that when I throw an object up into the air, that it stops at the top and turns around and comes back down again. So I say the potential energy at the top is equal to the potential energy at 2 meters plus the kinetic energy at 2 meters. That's going to be mg times 5 equals to mg times 2 plus 1 half mv squared. And then I can get rid of my masses and I solve for v. I know everything else, right? So this is square root of 60, which is, you know, 7 point something. All right? Uh, that's that's a very similar question to the roller coasters, except you know this is my top and this is my two meters. Only over here I only have potential energy, and uh, if it's not moving, right? If I say it's at rest, and over here I have potential plus kinetic energy. So you, all these questions are largely the same, the conservation of energy problems, but they just might look a little bit different that you're looking at two different scenarios and you're asking what kind of energy do I have here and what kind of energy do I have here. You good with me? That's a good question. You'll see a couple of three or four conservation of energy problems tomorrow. Three or four work problems, three or four conservation of momentum problems, and three or four um, impulse problems where you're hit, running into a solid surface and then we'll have sort of a peppering of conceptual problems that fill out the rest of the test. So which uh, element previous uh, test involved uh, an object going down a slope? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look. Uh, number two right here. That one's practically the same. This is fall 17. Uh, number th three is a, an inclined plane. Um, I mean, these have to do with inclined planes here, but they're, they're, you know, that was fall 17. There were several there. Um, I don't know if I see any here. Yeah, number eight on fall 16. So, yeah, if you look back on those, we can work through some of those if y'all like. Um, but there are a number of examples in our old exams. All right. What else? Conservation of energy or work? Any particular questions right now? We can look at the other tutor Oops. as well. Any others from this one? Do I see it? All right, let's look at the other one. This was this one's the work one. All right. Just gonna sort of thumb through these. Yeah. Yeah. One piece. Okay, number one. So number one, how much work is done on the cart by friction? Um, you're moving 20 meters, and the frictional force is 35 newtons. And you'll see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. And so my work done by friction is just 35 times 20. There is an angle given, but the displacement and the frictional force are 180 degrees to one another. You said, which is part of this again? Uh, force times displacement. The work is the force times the displacement. The force, the frictional force is 35 newtons, 
and the displacement is 20. So my work then, because they're opposite, is going to be negative 35 times 20 is 700. Uh, before, as you said, it was 20. Mm, no, the distance, the displacement is 20. Force is 35. Work is force, displacement, cosine of the angle theta. That's going to be 35 newtons times 20 meters. And the angle between them is 180 degrees. That's the hard part on that one because you might be inclined to use the 28 degrees or whatever that angle was, but that's not the angle for the frictional force. And be careful. Make sure that when you're looking at the problems that if I give an angle, that it's actually the angle that you want because the frictional force and the displacement will always be in opposite directions. The frictional force will be in this direction and the displacement, they'll always be in opposite directions, even if I have another force that's acting like I did here at some other angle. Okay? With, between the frictional force and the displacement, that, right? That's why I often just jump ahead and say, well, the work due to friction is minus FD. I just get rid of the cosine 180 and make it into a negative one, which is what it's equal to. All right? Yeah. Well, so you subtracted uh, 20, uh, 20 from 180? No, 90. I just took 180. Uh, so because this vector and this vector are 180 degrees opposite, right? They're in opposite directions, so that's 180 degrees. So Not for the work done by friction. In this problem, it says, what is the work done by the shopper? And then that becomes important. The work done by the shopper, oh, as you know, it's not important because the work that's on, uh, this one is a little bit different because it doesn't give you the force that the shopper pushes, but the work done by the shopper, let's see, the work done by the shopper situation looks like this. I'm pushing in this direction, that's my force F. There's a frictional force in this direction, and my displacement is in this direction. But I know that this force, F, has two components, and Fx is equal to F. And so I know that F is equal to 35 newtons, so the work that is done by the shopper is Fd cosine theta, which is going to be 35 newtons times the distance, 20 meters. I watch, I'm going to rock your world. Cosine of zero degrees. That the angle in this case is not important because this 35 newtons right here is Fx, not F. Okay? You with me on this? You with me? Mm -hmm. See some nodding of heads? Mm -hmm. Some nodding of heads? The key to that problem would be the fact that it's going at a constant speed, right? Right, yeah. So all of our problems, they'll be going at constant speed. Yeah, you're right. But if it was accelerating, uh, there would be an extra force here. But this would be bigger than this force. You're right. You're definitely correct. But it, that will always be the case for this test, that there will be no accelerating of this. So will be moving at constant speed. Except for what you know, going up and down. Those are sort of different. So if the displacement was going in the same direction, then you would use the angle that you gave. Displace? Say it again. If the displacement was going in the same direction as F, then we would use the angle you gave. Now, let me show you an example. If it was a problem where I give you this force, and I say the force is, I don't know, 25 newtons or whatever, and it's at an angle of 30 degrees, and it moves a distance our displacement equal to 2 meters, then the work done by that force would be 25 newtons times 2 meters times the cosine of 30. That's when you would use that. But this, this open sec problem is a little bit different because I didn't give you this force. But you were able to figure out Fx because you knew that Fx, because it's not accelerating, Fx is equal to the frictional force. That's a lot of words. I'm just saying really fast. Mm -hmm. But Fx is equal to the frictional force. And so that's how I was able to calculate the work done by the shopper in pushing the cart. But listen, 
because the, the cart isn't accelerating, you know that the total work that you're doing on the thing is zero because you're not adding any energy. And so whatever work's done by the shopper is also done negative by the frictional force, which is the case, 700 and negative 700. Brittany? Okay. Caitlin, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't get Caitlin Kramer? I didn't get you earlier. Okay. What else? Yeah, we still put, uh, puzzled by that shop, uh, shopping uh, car because it, because uh, isn't the angle isn't the angle theta supposed to be like below the, the horizontal axis? On the shopping cart problem? Uh, that's that's what I saw. Yes, it was. It was right here. Uh, the angle is here, but you didn't actually use that angle to find the work done by the force. You didn't need the angle. The first part of the problem was asking for the work that is done by the friction. You didn't need the angle because it was it was not 25 degrees. The frictional force is zero degrees from the displacement. And the work done on the cart by the shopper, you likewise did not need the angle because you know what fx is. Uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, how come 25 degrees wasn't, uh, wasn't used? Well, you use it down in this last part, right, I think. I can't see that problem. I forget what it asked. But in short, I think it asked something like, what is f? <laughs> what is f? And in that, you had to use the angle. Because you know that work is equal to F D cosine theta. And it wanted to know what is F. And so you say 700 is equal to F D cosine of 25. And then you can solve for F. You know D is 20. So when to ask for the, for the frictional force, uh, that means uh, you would just uh, set uh, theta to equal uh, 180 automatically. Right. It actually gave you the frictional force. And you set the angle equal to 180, right? Right. All right. What else? Want to look at the others? All right. Six. Are you going to give any any answers that are like that with the uh, ACOP? No, you, there are no conversions between joules and calories. Okay. The, yeah, the, they had two answers with the same amount of joules. Yeah, right no conversions. I'll, I'll make you do any conversions between joules and calories. All right, let's look at... Uh, you want to go on to momentum? Yeah. yeah, that was the most recent one, right? Is it this one? I think it was actually the one before it. I might be wrong, but I think it was. Even though we're spending the time on this, make sure that you are also looking at the concept test, studying the old tests. All those would be helpful for you to prepare for this. I know that y'all have been doing that mm -hmm. the past few weeks, right? Yes. Every day for half an hour a day? Give or take. Okay, good. That's what I like to hear. Okay, these are all impulse problems. What was the question you asked, Ross? It was, the question I was asking was, it was the bumper cars. Oh yeah, that's this one. Yeah, so uh, the bumper cars. The one that people had the most trouble with on the bumper cars was this part. And look, you can look at this and say, the car before it hits the wall is 2.8. And so the only possible option, because when it hits the wall, it's going to lose energy. The only possible option is C. Because all these are faster or the same speed as the, the approach velocity. And when it hits the wall, it loses energy. Okay? Because it's a, an inelastic collision. It loses energy. Okay. I know what you're thinking. That you're thinking it bounces off the wall. And so maybe if it bounces, then it bounces off at a higher speed. Yeah. But that's not what happens. So is there, so is there 
No, there's a formula, but you don't really need to apply it. But let's do it anyway, because, you know, there might be other options that could be reasonable. And I think that the formulas that we used were probably like initial set, set equal to the final. Hold on, let me write this down. So, yeah, so our force is 4,000 newtons. Our time is 0.2 seconds. And I know that the mass is 200 and the initial velocity is 2.8 meters per second. Now, I don't know, is it positive or negative? Uh, but if I think about the picture that I have, I have this object going in this direction, and then it's going in this direction, and I know that my force is in this direction. And so that initial velocity has to have a direction that's opposite the force. I could also draw it the other way, right? I could say that it's going in this direction, and then it goes in this direction. That's the bumper car. But my force is in this direction, in which case I would say F is equal to negative 4,000. But the way that I've drawn the force or written the force, that's not what I've done. So in order to make this correct, I need to make this a negative value. You with me? So wait, initial velocity. So initial velocity is negative. Yeah, it depends how I draw it. Either I make vi negative, or I make f negative. But they had already given you f as positive, so I'm going to make my vi, my initial velocity, negative. Then my vf, not here. My vf will be positive, some positive value. We're not using this scenario. So, I say F is equal to delta P over delta T. That's 4,000 is equal to 200 times VF. That's what I'm looking for. Minus VI. Minus negative 2.8. Divided by 0.2. And then I solve that for VF and I get 1.2. Alrighty? Y'all good on that? Because you will have impulse problems, and there'll be something similar to this. Right. Um, I know this one was a little wonky just because of the way the signs are presented. But you've seen it now, and so you should be able to do it. So will you so on the test will you give like like will it be will it be obvious like whether it's supposed to be positive or negative or will are we gonna have to think on it? You have to think. Okay. Yeah. So I'll Usually I'll, I'll use the language, I use the language, this is the speed, and if I use the language, this is the speed, then this, the sign's not given. I'm just giving you the magnitude of the velocity. If I say this is the velocity, that's something different, right? That's a vector. And so I'll give you the sign. If it's a positive value, it's, a, it's to, the, to the right. If it's negative, it's to the left. So read those carefully. Look for speed and velocity. Okay. Once you do enough of them, they become sort of second nature. But uh, you need to be practicing them. All right. Uh, most of these, I think, are fairly straightforward. Any of these you want to look at? Um, They're not straightforward if you don't know how to do them, right? Tennis racket. How about the tennis racket one? Yeah, we can do the tennis racket. Oh, shoot. I can't see it, though. Okay. I'm Never sorry. Uh, well, it once worked, uh, worked out in the book. Okay. Is it okay if I don't do the tennis track? It's fine. Okay. Any of these others, though? Let's see. All right, let's look at the other one. And then we can look at some old exams. Recoil? Do you want to do a recoil problem? Yes. Yeah. Look, I'll just make one up. But then we can... Well, let's look at an old exam. Um, well, let's go back up. Let me 
seven. Here we go. This is a uh, fall seventeen, number fifteen. It says a person with mass sixty kilograms is standing still. So that means that I have a person, and they're holding a ball, and they're standing still. They have an initial momentum equal to zero. And then they take that ball, and they throw it off in this direction. And I know that the person is going to go in that direction because the final momentum, you know what? Still equal to zero because the initial and final momentum are always equal. And I want to know what is the velocity or this person. Oh, I drew it backwards. I'm sorry. Um, well, let's just make this negative, okay? So this person is going at negative 2 meters per second. And I want to know what is the velocity of this guy. So I say the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. But the final momentum has two parts. It has the mass of the person, 60 kilograms, times minus 2. Notice I've changed the problem, right? I've made the velocity negative. Y'all aware? I did that. The only reason I did is just because I drew it wrong right here. I should have flipped the ball on the person. Um, 60 times negative 2 plus the mass of the ball, which is 12, times the velocity of the ball. So that means the velocity of the ball has to be positive 10. Although, of course, the right answer was actually what? It was negative 10, right? Because I changed it. But the way I changed it is now going to be positive. Y'all follow me what I did there? Velocity. Velocity 2. Yeah, it's asking for the velocity. When I'm asking for the velocity, you better sure check the signs. Make sure the signs are right. Notice here, actually, I had a plus and minus. Uh, though, just because I have a plus and minus number doesn't mean that one of them is the right answer. So don't, don't fall into that trap. A red herring. A red herring. Um, I don't like to think of it as a red herring. It is a way that you can misunderstand how to do the problem, and you would get a different answer. Assessing, do you know how to work momentum problem? Okay. So this is uh, 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 final uh, uh, final minus the initial. Uh, no, this is saying that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. They both equal zero, yes. Because initially, nothing's moving. And so the momentum is equal to zero. And then final, there is a, one's moving one way, so the other has to move in the opposite direction. So the reaction. Sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. We'll look. The one thing that you won't see on the old exams are questions like, where was it? Like number 12 here, this in an inelastic collision, two objects collide with each other and come to a rest, and I give their momentum. In the past, I haven't really done questions like that, but there are a couple questions that are like that. Oh, no, I guess this was the only one, but we, ha we have looked at some others, and you might see one like that where I give you, say, the initial momentum and not the initial, not the initial velocity. Like if I were to do this one, I would say two objects collide with each other and come to a rest. Uh, the first object had an initial momentum of 30. So it's moving in such a way that the momentum, pi, is equal to 30 kilogram meters per second. What happened here? The other object is moving in some direction. I'm going to sort of guess and say that it's moving in this direction because I know that when they hit that they have a velocity equal to zero. So P final is equal to zero. So what I'd say is I'd say PI is equal to PF. PI, I'll call that PI1 is equal to 30 plus PI2 
is going to be equal to zero, so pi2 is equal to negative 30 kilogram meters per second. We had another problem somewhere. I forget where that was. But we had another problem where we were looking at the momenta and thinking about where the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. So you might see a question like that tomorrow. Where I'm giving you not the mass and velocity, but the initial momentum for the object. Don't let that 30 throw loose. Y'all be okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. No 13, but look, there's another, this is another recoil problem. It's the same. Clown holding a barbell, throws the barbell away, and the clown recoils. Anytime you're down with a, a, gun, a rifle or a gun, you shoot it, there's a bullet going in that direction, you start going the opposite direction. Oh, here's the, one, the other one that was like where you're dealing with momentum, not velocities. Number seven, you're going to have one like number seven. In fact, you'll have a couple like number seven. Uh, I like number seven because it doesn't show you a picture. Usually I give you a picture, and I'll give you one with a picture, but I like number seven because it, it makes you think about the directions, and you have to draw out your own figure. Y'all want to do number seven? Sure. You have to do it tomorrow, so let's go ahead and do it here, right, because it's on the test. So, mass 111. Kilogram mass is moving in this direction at three. No, 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 not in that direction. In this direction at three meters per second. Mass M2 is initially at rest. And then M1 bounces and travels at one meter per second. And M2, we want to know what is the velocity equal to. All right? But we can guess and say that the velocity is going to be in that direction, right? Because I say that because the initial momentum of this guy is to the right. But this object has momentum to the left. So I know that in order for the net momentum to be to the right, that this one has to have more momentum but to the right in order for these to be equal. So, I say my initial momentum, PI, is equal to my final momentum, PF. PI is just going to be 111.1 times 3 plus 0. And that's going to equal to 111.1 times negative 1 plus M2. What is M2? 222.2. Times V2 final. And then you solve for V2 final. So that's 333.3 plus 111.1 divided by 1. All right. You will have that problem tomorrow. It's, it's one of the OpenStax questions. I changed the numbers, of course, but it's, they're similar to what you see. Y'all could do that one, right? That's a gimme. It's a gimme? Yeah, it's really a gimme, but it's, it's, simpler than, it's simpler than your hardest and the hardest one. I agree. So, yeah, it's simpler than the hardest. All right, let's take a look at this a little bit more. More of these. We can go look at some old tests, too. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular questions about old tests? Yeah. Absolutely. What number was it? Oh, so this is the, the one in your textbook. It's fall 15. First of all, let me just say that you're not going to have one of these where you have like bullets firing. Like you'll just have a, a simpler recoil where I'm just throwing one object. So this one's a lot like the clown problem. It's a lot like the uh, the guy holding the ball and throwing it. 
it's the same as that, except this one was kind of wonky because you had more than one bullet. Right? So if you imagine this problem just up to here, and then not worry about how many bullets there are. Would that, is that OK? I can work through it anyway. Let's, uh, I'd really rather find another problem, though. Is that OK? Another recoil problem? Because this one's, the students this semester, we had worked that problem. It was one they had already seen. And so that, that's why they saw it. And that's why you haven't seen it, just because I just didn't do it. Um, just make up one but it's it's like one that we've worked already but you'll see a couple of these so it's worth looking at say you have a guy and he has some object and the initial momentum is zero this is just like the cart and the bullet right the cart and the bullet they have no momentum and then the guy throws whatever it is say at two meters per second say it's a one kilogram object and let's say what is his velocity in recoil. And let's say that his mass is 50 kilograms. And so we'd say, huh? How heavy is the object you threw? Huh? How heavy is the object you threw? A oh, one kilogram. So PI is equal to zero. Then that's going to be 50 times VF plus one times two. And so uh, VF is going to be negative 2 divided by 50 or what's that 0 0.04 negative 0 0.04 so this velocity here is negative 0 0.04 meters per second so i don't mean to dismiss your question but i don't want to get bogged down in the whole bullet because i think that was was that the hard part of it the bullet you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Because you will see recoils tomorrow, recoil problems, but they're they're still just conservation of momentum. All right, what else? Look, um, to sort of go through some of these. Any in particular, energy or momentum? Uh, so uh, for this exam, I, I noticed that for the past ones there were a couple of them who, uh, questions that. Oh yes. Yeah. So if you get to rotation, that means that you don't go that. Uh, I think y'all can probably see them. I would cut off right here. Uh, you'd cut off right here. But sometimes in exam three, we get into that chapter seven. I mean, we even got into chapter seven a little bit. But oh, nice guy. I said we're not going to put it on the test. It fits better in the fourth exam anyway. All right. If you have questions about particular exams, shoot me an email. I'll tell you where they are. But I think usually it's, which I hate to say it's obvious because it might not be obvious. But if you look for things like angular or rotation, anything that's moving in a circle, then that's not going to be on this test or anything past that because I keep them all clumped together, the questions. Yeah. They don't exist. Yeah, that's a good reason. All right. So, uh, which ones do have the video? Uh, the ones that are that have videos listed. I think they pick up in 2013 or 14 or so. They're all on that website there. All right. More questions. I we can take a few more minutes if we have more questions, or we can go home and eat dinner and go to bed. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Get a ladder. A ladder. Get a ladder. What are you talking no, about? The ladder. Oh, the ladder. T T E R.